Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to hit the Monte Carlo again. Got a few plans for today. Uh, I'll run you all through it. But as usual, before we kick off, if you like my channel, like what I do, don't forget to subscribe. Big thumbs up. It happens. It helps massively for the channel. Seriously, uh, subscribers is one of the one of the key things for the algorithm for YouTube. Obviously, views are more important, but subscribers helps massively. So don't forget to hit that subscription button. It doesn't cost you a penny. You don't even have to have the bell notification if you don't want. It just helps having that subscriber. So let's 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 dive in. I'll show you what I've got for the car, and we'll uh, we'll start putting some stuff back on it and get this this car. Which I th I like this car a lot. I think the white and black. Or should I say the black on white? Um, they look they look nice to do. So let, let's crack on. And I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so basically, what we've got are literally everything for the inside of the car. I've got us the new driver's airbag. We've got the new passenger airbag. Airbags in the back there, and we've got the pair of front front seat belts. And it's such a shame that all cars don't do this separate airbag panel. I know there's quite a few that do, but there's so much, so many cars out there now that you've got to change the complete dashboard just for that that air, that passenger airbag. And I know even the newer the, the newer Fabio after this, they've gone back to the whole dashboard. It's a bit silly, really, but it's it's nice when you come across one like this, nice and easy and cheap to change. I have got the crossbar, the crash bar here. And I've got the module for the the airbags. Not sure if I have to change that yet. I'm going to try fitting these and we'll see if we can wipe the cords off then afterwards. Unfortunately we can't fit this crash bar today. Because the front panel's not here. Um, so perhaps we'll do the inside and the headlights today. And leave the front end for another video. So yeah, we'll put, the, we'll put all that in, and what I was thinking of doing was having a go at repairing the tabs on these headlights. So the complete tabs are here, there's nothing missing, so it should be a relatively easy fix. Um, and what I have got, which I haven't tried yet, I've had this for a, few, a couple a month or so, I've got a, a hot staple gun here, and I haven't tried it yet. So why don't we give it a go and see what it's like on these headlight tabs. We'll use that and we'll use the soldering iron and we'll try and repair these tabs ready for once the front panel's back on we can then fit the headlights and then we're just left with a bumper. Yeah. So I will run through with you on camera putting all the seat belts in and stuff because we did miss it didn't we on the last video my camera decided not to work so I'll set you up so you can have a bit of time lapse and I have remembered my torch as well today thanks to Adam for the torch one of the subscribers called Adam bought us this torch to use so thank you very much Adam right we'll set up and we'll go with the seat belts first get both seat belts in then we'll move on to the airbags Okay, instead of um, time lapsing, I thought I'd just go through it with you on camera exactly how to refit these, these seat belts. It's not an hard process, it's not time consuming, so let's just go through it on camera instead of you having a boring time lapse with some music over it. So, first of all, you've got your airbag plug, well, your, your SRS plug we call them. Um, so, this is what makes your pre tensioner fire if you're in a crash. And which is why we're replacing it because this pretensioner on the old ones has fired and, and you have to replace them. So make sure you get that plugged in and make sure you push the yellow, the orange plug down. If you don't, it won't work. So you're going to make sure that's plugged down, pushed down. These just sit on that little bracket inside there. So you just drop it in. like that and then secure it with your bolt this bolt is a M10 spline and make sure to look in your workshop manual for torx figures 
which I will check after don't you worry and then now you can have your seatbelt moving nice in the right position then as we work our way up we have this bracket in there so slide it on your seatbelt you will have two T25 bolts bit hard to see on camera whilst I'm doing it but I'll show you once it's on very easy job to do this where is my I haven't brought my torch bit one second T25 torques I'll stangle you up a little bit make sure you can see belt then continues up and again M10 spline straight through little wash on the back and into there Tighten that up now. Okay. And then the last bit, the bottom of the seat belt gets fastened down underneath the carpet. Let's get the Nimpermis station. Again, another M10 spline. Get it started and then wind it in. Almost there. And then just check your torques afterwards. So yeah, that's it. That's as, as hard as it is as it is. A couple of minutes job per seat belt. I'll now get on the um, plastic trim. It just locates in these. Very easy and then pushes in. Pulls pull your rubber seal round to make it look nice and then you're done. I've done the passenger side. That one's in. So I'll throw this cover on and then we'll move on to the airbags. Okay, there we go. Turn it up. Driver's seatbelt in. Passenger. All done, all trims back on. Everything's talked up, all covers on. Looking good. So let's move on to the passenger airbag now. And uh, again, that'll be a very quick job, so I'll probably just run through it with you on camera and then we'll save the time lapse. So let's get set up and then we'll go through it. 
Okay, so this is your passenger airbag. The cover is separate to the airbag. You can remove it. This one is all together ready. So obviously it's going to go in like that. You have the one plug, which is down here. So, sorry you're a little bit lopsided. So you got to get it somewhere near because the cable's not very long. Try to get it into into position. They only go in one way. These plugs. Just place it into its rough position and then you just push it down. I say you just push it down. It appears to take some persuasion. Getting somewhere now. There you go. Needs a good clean. It is the same colour, they're all the same. Just needs a bit of a clean up. So now once you've pushed it down like that, in there, you've got three screws. I will put them in now, um, and then I'll show you what how to get this last little cover in here. All right, so them three bolts are in. Our passenger airbag is finished, all connected, all done. So just to finish off, you have an extra little glove box here. So I'm just going to slot that in, push till it clicks, open it, and then you have the two T25 Torx screws, which if I can find one quickly enough, I'll show you. So that's it. And they're going to go up in there. So I'll get them tightened in now, and then we're going to move on to the driver's airbag. Right, just first of all, I lied a little bit. They are T20, not T25. And obviously, just bear in mind, you need to make sure you've got your battery unplugged when you're messing with airbag stuff. So now we're onto the steam wheel. Extremely easy, this. All we're going to do is push this clip on. I'll try to do it. No, nope, I'm going the wrong way around with it, so that's why it's fighting me. Again, push the white clip down, and then we're just going to orientate it to the right position, and push. And that is it. That's done. Now I removed the clocks and the cowling. You have to remove the cowl and I remove the clocks just to help. So I'm going to put them back in. There's nothing crazy about these, so it's like every car. The clocks have three screws. The bottom cowling screws to the steering column, the top cowling screws to the bottom cowling. That's as simple as that. So I'm going to throw them in off camera. And then we will get the scanner out and we'll scan and hopefully we, should have an, we shouldn't have an airbag light and we shouldn't have any cowls on this car at all. 
All right, so we've got all the clocks back in, cowling's back on. So we need to connect the battery back up. I'm just gonna put it on loose for now. The thing's making some noises in there. What I'll do quickly as well. Okay, let's just sort the alarm out first. Does it just indicate? Let's just leave that off for a sec. Yeah, all right. Now we've got some power. Let's just plonk this new parcel shelf in. A few have said that their score just came with no parcel shelf, so I don't know if a parcel shelf is an option on a score. Don't really know. But thought it should have one so what did it cost £30 I think it was it is obviously a second hand one but that's better isn't it so I did notice there was a bit of road noise coming from the boot area so perhaps with that in it might help a bit okay got the scanner in let's now Check for the codes. So your ODB port is down here under the steam wheel. Let's get ourselves set up. Just tag the ignition on there. Right. Diagnostics. Scold up. Uh, vehicle select Fabio 08 to 15. I'm, not, I'm just gonna do a manual scan because I just want to get to the airbags. Um, was that on the first screen? AB airbag. Oh, no deal. Let's go there. Quick scan. Read fault codes. So it should um, obviously still have the codes on because I haven't wiped it yet. So we had passive, um, whatever, driver airbag igniter, passenger airbag igniter, driver seatbelt, and um, passenger seatbelt. So they were the four codes. If we go back, clear fault memory. Yep. We should now have no codes, no fault codes. So again, you don't need to change the module. That's just deleted the crash data off the off the off the module itself. I'll look at module information. Nothing really tells us anything there. Well, let's see what view data does. A whole lot of options there, isn't there? Yeah, I'm not going to be messing with that. I don't think. Yeah, the point is we have no codes now, so let's move on to the dash. So now, if we let's make sure we're in neutral. Didn't really want to start, but so we have a. Open door. They even reach over. Oh, see, that's loose. Let's get rid of the seatbelt light. Put the seatbelt on. Handbrake off. And all we've got is the cold coolant light. These these lights have a light have a light that tell you that the basically the engine's cold. Just so you don't rev it much, basically. But other than that, that'll go as soon as it gets a little bit of temperature temperature into the engine, into the coolant. Um, other than that, we are completely done on the inside. So what did that take? Probably half an hour of my time it took to do both seat belts and the airbags. Plus another probably half an hour to remove them all. 
If you see an hour and a half, Mark's to remove and replace both airbags and both seat belts. I think that'll cover you there. So inside, we are finished. So what we'll try and do now is have a little do at repairing the tabs on them headlights using the hot stapler that I've got. See how that goes. So I'll get ourselves set up and then I'll put you on a bit of time lapse and we'll see um, how it goes. Right here we go with the hot stapler and I think I've got a new favourite toy. Just watch this. So you hold it in place, hit your stapler, one button there, hold it against it, nothing happens until you press the button and then just watch it sink in to where you want it. Let go of the button, let it go off for a sec, pull it off and voila! How cool is that? So I'll go around all the crack put loads of them in and then what I do is I put on this little spade bit and I melt the plastic over where the wire's gone over and then if I want to add a little bit more and um, it's coming out really good, really strong fit and you just have to snip the ends off really, basically or drill a little angle grinder just grind the ends off when you're finished and uh, yeah it's good, I like it so I'll carry on um, repairing this now and let you know how it's going when I've done them both and I'm finished. Okay guys, I'm getting somewhere with these headlights. It's going really well to be honest. I'm really, really fond of this um, hot stapler. It's doing the job and it's making you know the joints really strong. I'm putting some more plastic on top. So my plastic rods as well. And I need to trim down the ends of the staples with my angle grinder but I haven't got it with me. So this is taking quite a while this, so I've I've done one. This one needs some work on it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the camera now for this day, for this for this video, shall we say. Um I'll finish these two headlights off off camera and uh then when we when we move on to the next video, we're basically gonna be hopefully taking the crash panel off not crash panel, the front panel off, crash bar off. Replacing front panel and crash bar, I'm going to try to do it without draining the coolant or the aircon. See if that's possible, I'm not sure yet, but we'll give it a go. And then we can fit the new one when it's here. Move crash bar. Do the repair on the bumper. I'm just debating whether it's possible to kind of just, just do this side. Because if, if we kind of like made a line around here and here, there's very little you know, cross section that's going to stand, I don't know I don't know whether to just sand it all down, repaint the whole bumper and I've done with it. I just need to get to, get to the bottom of why my lacquer is being so ripply because it's going to take a lot of time to sand down that C250 and then I'll have to do it on this again because this will probably be the same I might try getting some heat into this place from when I'm painting that one. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to cut it off there, finish off fixing these headlights, and then in the next video, like I said, we can we can focus on the front end, taking that section off, putting the new bits on, and get this car built back up. So that's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. A little bit different to the usual time lapse. I tried to you know, do things on camera that were quick enough that you weren't going to be sat here for three hours watching it so I hope you liked it let me know what you think about doing that instead of the time lapse on the smaller jobs and um, yeah really enjoying this Monte Carlo it's a nice car looking forward to get it finished so as always thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one cheers <laughs>